for question five, um, again, this is talking about Nissenbaum, and where, uh, you know, question four was kind of like talking, asking you to set out the view that she's responding to. Question five is pretty much purely about what, about her view, right? So remember, her view is in really short, uh, that we sh- we shouldn't treat privacy online as a brand new thingy. Um, we already have lots of privacy-related practices in ordinary areas of our lives, and what we should be doing when we consider problems with privacy online is just try to figure out how to um, extend the norms and practices that we already have around privacy um, to these uh, sort of newer situations. Okay, so... Um, you're going to want to say a little bit more about that, right? So the first thing you got to do is just kind of explain what Nissenbaum's account is. Uh, and it, basically you just want a, um, a beefed up version of what I just said. And, you know, look at the, look at her papers, uh, uh, that we have online that will, that will help you there. Okay. The tricky thing for this question is going to be picking the right examples because, you don't want to pick an example that's going to be um, too easy um, because then you're not going to have as much room to work down here. So l- let me try to talk through um, that a little bit. And, and you know, just a disclaimer, I don't mean to say any of the examples I'm about to use you shouldn't use because it's too easy. Um, you're just going to have to, well, you'll see. So you can totally use these. Here we go. So um, some of the examples we talked about in class, I think the easy, the easy sort of uh, straightforward cases where things are already really well worked out in ordinary life are things like around uh, your finances and banking, right? Uh, things like um, uh, medicine, right? So... And we talked about some other examples. And then we talked about sort of harder examples, too, um, where the things that we do online don't exactly line up with any sort of um, uh, standard, ordinary practice that we've been doing forever. So, you know, my usual example here is a lot of the social media stuff. Like, um, you know, as I always joke, Twitter is basically the equivalent of an angry mob. Um, but other social media things, too, um, just might in general be a little more difficult. So let's, uh, so what I want you to do in this uh, sort of case, so you can pick any of these or anything that you come up with. Totally fine. Just because um, what I'm looking for is just your ability to articulate the sort of things that Nissenbaum is going to care about. Um, and then sort of apply them and then, you know, sort of think critically about it. So what you want to do is after you've said a bit about, you know, her account, um, you want to, um, come up with an area of online activity. So, you know, something like banking or medicine or social media or, or whatever, um, you know, multi-person role-playing games, you know, all that stuff, whatever, um, and so you, and then sort of explain, um, maybe I shouldn't make that number two. <laughs> maybe I should say, let's see, um, I guess I, this question could be rewritten, but well, let's stick with as is. Okay. So number two, what you want to do is probably work through some of the, um, the offline stuff. So, you know, you would say like, uh, for example, in medicine, you would talk about how, um, the basic privacy rules are all basically um, without explicit consent. N- no healthcare provider can share anything except for like within the the office, right? Um, and then you know, like you come up with stuff, talk about stuff like uh, you know, you would have a right to complain if the doctor doesn't close the door um, of the exam room when she's talking about your test results, for example, or. Um, uh, you know, the, the nursing staff leaving your, um, your, your chart, you know, sort of open on the counter where people who are paying can, you know, just see or, or, uh, announcing your diagnosis in the waiting room or, um, uh, 
pharmacist calling out your name and the sort of prescription that you're there for, right? It's funny, everybody seems to have an example of a medical privacy violation uh, when we talk about this in class. So, uh, or, you know, the banking cases, whatever. But what you want to do is um, really spend, you know, you don't want to sort of gloss over this because this is the part you want to f- dig into hard. Um, and you want to sort of really talk about, you know, like what you think the principles at stake are um, and give some examples, you know, how, how they actually all uh, fit together. So you start with the offline stuff. You know, you say, okay, in the banking context, here's what I think the, our general norms and privacy practices are. Um, and then you would, say, you would turn around and sort of apply to the, um, the online cases, right? You try to say, and so here's sort of how I think this, these principles, you know, should apply to the online stuff, right? I guess I shouldn't mix my uses of pens. Um, and then once you've done that, You want to try to think of something that, so, you know, remember Nissenbaum's claim is that, you know, at the very least, we should start with the stuff that we already know how to deal with in ordinary everyday life. And if we run into things that are brand new, then, you know, we'll have to do a bit more work, right? So that's kind of the trajectory of this question, right? So then the next task is to come up with something, okay, now I need my sparkly pen again, is to come up with... um, uh, the privacy, re- ah, damn, sorry. So the next thing to do is to come up with the, a, a problem uh, that's going to arise in the online case, right? Where um, somehow your information might be shared with, say, advertisers or tracking, or um, maybe there's a technology-related thing, you know, sort of the way... Um, so, for example, um, the way that uh, if you search for some medical terms, uh, for example, you know, as a, like my work computer, you know, I'm always getting fibromyalgia and, you know, sort of uh, regional sympathetic dystrophy type ads because I'm, you know, often looking for academic papers about those chronic pain conditions, you know, and those follow me around on the web on the, on the work computer. If somebody else was to walk into my office and see a whole bunch of fibromyalgia ads uh, showing up on my web browser, they might think I have fibromyalgia. So it's like sort of another way that the information can leak or I don't know. So you pick some sort of um, case that seems like whatever principles you articulated here um, aren't going to work out exactly well. And then, you know, you just try to work through it. Because remember, she says, when we get into these cases, um, at that point, you know, we have to basically do sort of uh, good old fashioned ethics or political philosophy, right? So that's what I want you to do in this question. Um, It's really open ended. you can do, a, there's a ton of different things you could do. So my main advice to you is A, make sure, you know, that you do each of these things, right? There's a lot, of, there's a bunch of steps. Um, don't mix it up, kind of make sure you separate it out so that when I'm reading it, you know, I can, it, it's totally obvious to me what all the different parts of the question are, you know, where they are and what you're doing when. Um And then, uh, really, I would suggest, you know, with the principles and then the the principles and then the the problems and all that, don't don't shotgun it. Don't try to be like, here's 20 different things and here's a little bit about each. Um, That's not going to be as good for you as just picking one thing. You know, you can like say, well, here's, here's, you know, I think there's like five, you know, principles that are at kind of at stake and, and here they are, you know, but then I'm really only going to focus on this one. Um, and here's how it would work when it was, you know, online. Right. But, uh, oops, I didn't mean to point to that. I meant to point to, I guess over there, sorry. Um, and then here's the problem that, you know, that doesn't look like it would solve. And then, you know, here's how you solve it. So that's a horrible diagram, but hopefully that made sense with at least the words. So, you really want to focus in on just one thing and then just trace it through because that's really what I'm looking for at the end of the day in a question like this is that you understand 
the approach that Nissenbaum wants us to be using, and you can sort of articulate it, and then you can just kind of think through, here's how this would work, and then here's some problems that would arise, and here's maybe how we could try to fix them, okay?